Greetings, this is Timothy Nelson, Digital Apothecary and Associate Professor of Pharmacy Practice. So, something I want to uh, kind of go on is, this is something that I'm living through right now, is what's it like to be a pharmacy professor with kids? How friendly is this job for children? And this is something that I've heard people ask me. Um, so, I started as an assistant professor at the age of 26 or 27. Um, which if anyone in academia is watching this and they're like, how the hell did you start as a professor um, at that age? Well, keep in mind, um, academia and pharmacy is really, really different. And you can watch my other videos about that. But um, the catch here is I started that and then I got married few years after um, and then had kids my first two years ago um, at 32 yeah and that was a game changer and the big thing that happened is everything and everything I was doing drastically changed the year my kid was born um, moved into a house so I take care of house and now I have a kid and my wife works full time and I work full time. And the big thing was just changing of schedule. So my old schedule used to be basically um, I would stay up late. I would probably burn the midnight oil like nothing else. I would stay up till two o'clock in the morning. Sometimes weekends I would stay up till like four or five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I would play video games. I don't do that much anymore. And then um, other times I would write. And I wrote a lot um, when I started out. And I was doing a lot of reviews, papers, and such like that. And because I had the time. I had the bloody time to do that. And I could be more active in a lot of things. I would do a lot more volunteer work. I would do a lot of club activities. So bottom line is I used to do a lot of things um, that I did because I had the time to give to them. And sometimes I wonder why other faculty didn't do them. And I would say, oh, they have kids, so there's probably other stuff going on. And it was blah, blah, blah. You know, get argues like the whole millennial chat. Um, and then, you know, I would wake up in the morning and I would go to usually my clinical site since I was in an apartment that was less than two miles away from my clinical site, it was very quick. I could just roll out of bed and go to the hospital. And then my uh, university where I worked was another three miles away the opposite direction. So I never had to go very far. I never had to worry about like a commute and such because I lived right smack in the middle of the city. So time-wise, I never really had to worry about commute. It was kind of like get up, take a shower, get dressed, drink coffee, maybe some breakfast, and then go meet my students, finish up there, and drive to campus. And then stay at campus late, um, having meetings with students, mentorship, uh, clubs, activities again. And um, I even did like uh, evening clinic uh, once to twice a month. And that was 40 miles, I mean, 40 minutes away in another town that I would drive to. And then I would do that and then finish that, drive back home, and finish my day at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock sometimes. Because I, mean, I definitely remember like going to clinic for four hours, going back to campus, and leaving campus at five, getting out to the um, volunteer clinic at six, and staying there for three to four hours, usually about three, and spending another hour driving back home, because it's Massachusetts and traffic sucks, even in the evenings. Um, and even weekends, I would give up and do um, volunteer work for my clubs, like we might be doing a blood pressure screening at some event and such. So that was very much where I dedicated all my time. And then kids showed up and stayed in the apartment for a few months, but the reality was just too tight. And knew that when he started walking around, it was gonna just be impossible. So we bought a house that was between about a 20 minute commute for both me and my wife, uh, north of the city. So now I have a commute, this is new to me. Um, and most of my jobs have never had a commute. Like always lived around college, um, job at college was always a few miles away, I just had to go through traffic, um, high school jobs always down the street because I lived in a small town, uh, residency, I bought an apartment right next to the hospital, fellowship, 
by the apartment that I mean, stay in the apartment that was right down the street from the university. So, uh, commute was new to me. So if you don't, if you've always had that, it's you're probably fine with having that mentality. But for me, that was something I had to get used to. On top of the fact that I, by and large, probably do a lot of stuff to get ready the kid uh, for daycare, because my wife is also a pharmacist and she works the right schedule, so she could work um, mornings. So she'll be out the door by six, um, seven-ish, and then she could work evenings, in which case and she may go into work around 12 o'clock and close in pharmacy and get home at 10 o'clock at night. And if she's working mornings, usually she'll be home by 5 o'clock in the evening. And she could also work weekends, in which case then she's going a little later because the pharmacy opens a little later, but she'll still be home by like 6 p.m. at night. I'm the one with the set schedule now, I, but I, the catch is now I have to decide how to set my schedule. And that's something that I think I've kind of gotten down to a certain extent. I'm still learning. But um, what it is is basically I wake up. Before I know he wakes up, I get a shower, I get ready, I go downstairs, um, pack up in the car my stuff, which is usually grab my computer here throw in a bag, any other paperwork I had when I was working on. Uh, so basically now I have a mobile go system, and that's the key thing. I'm still trying to figure out the best bag to care for a laptop and all my stuff because I have like a mobile office because um, I have to jump multiple places now. In any event, so I have get this stuff already. Um, usually his lunch is packed the night before. Get his lunch together, uh, start making a little bit of breakfast for him. And then by this time he's st kind of stirring. So I go upstairs, I get him ready, pack him up and everything, dress him appropriately. Winter time I find he is terrible because he has to wear more stuff. Summer is amazing because he has to wear less stuff. Welcome to New England where you have multiple seasons, I guess. And then you basically then I put him in the car, give him a, his breakfast, give him his milk. I'm in the car, and then I drive to daycare. And daycare we chose to be a few miles away from my university because we knew that I was going to be basically taking him to and from university and taking him home. I mean, taking to and from home. And that was going to be a schedule. So I drop him off at daycare, uh, take him in, give him all stuff, updates through um, his, uh, his minders. Usually I get in anywhere between, I want to say on average, I get in between 8 and 9. Uh, a little bit earlier if I had to teach early in the morning for labs or lectures and such. So drop him off, and then um, I then have to decide for that day, based on my schedule, am I going to campus or am I going to site? Um, if I'm going to site, then I drive another like two or three miles to my site, park there, see my students, and at that point, I may stay at site all day, or I will go from site to campus. And other days, if I know I'm going to be on campus all day, I'll just go to campus, which is about another two or three miles away from the uh, daycare place, which makes things kind of easy, because... I'll tell you, um, there's been a few times where I will get a call from daycare saying, kids has a fever, in which case I'm like, he has a fever, okay, watch him, this is getting bad, then I could just go get to my car, drive, and pick up my kid, so that makes things easy, and that was another reason why, because, again, if my, my wife is a pharmacist working, like, what's she going to do, like, she has to find coverage, she has to find someone else, it's not as easy for her, so, if you're gathering something for an academic, um, Pharmacy professor, it's actually you're going to probably take point if your spouse has a job that's much more time intensive. Uh, you're probably going to be responsible for the kid the most, and I would say that has been by and large why I talk to other professors is that if they have a job that's the hours can be much more manageable, then you're probably going to be taking point on those types of things. So yeah, so if something bad happens um, with that, and then. Um, you know, then work at campus or site, finish up the day, and I usually try leaving by, in my case, anywhere between 4.30 and 5, so I can pick up my kid. By the time I get my kid into the car and settle and find out what happened for a day, I'm in my car either by between 5 and 5.20, and then it's another 20 to 40 minutes to drive home because, again, New England traffic. Um, and then, so try, usually commute coming in isn't that bad unless you get stuck in a kind of stu school bus, but um, go home. Or on the way home, I would stop, shop for food, and then I go home and I start making dinner. Because the key thing is, uh, most of the time, either my wife is going to be working in the evening, or she's going to be getting home a little bit after I get home. 
Um, or if she gets home a little bit before me, depending on her schedule, then she'll start um, warming things up because I do most of the cooking for us. Um, so I go home, start throwing things together. Um, some days I'll, I'll get lazy and just say I'm gonna get fast food or ask my wife to order something because I'm burned out. Um, and here's the game changer. And you know, in the past, when I would get home, then I could just say, hey, I can either relax or I can start doing work. And I'm looking at myself now, like, I am at 10, 18 in the evening doing this because he's asleep. And he goes to bed at 8 o'clock. His nighttime regimen starts at 7 o'clock where we watch a little bit of uh, YouTube videos. If you have a parent, you probably know Coco Melon and all that stuff. Um, sings the songs, um, drinks milk, he winds down, also will go in his bath at that time, and then brush his teeth, put him in bed, and then he takes about anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour to fall asleep. And usually I don't do any recordings until he falls asleep, and I don't do a lot of work until he falls asleep because I might have to go up and get him, but he's sleeping better now, so it makes things way better. But I will tell you, with a newborn, I had to take a break because... I was so sleep deprived, like writing and all that. Um, so we're in the past, I may, you know, stay up a lot. Oh, and I used to take naps. That was a big thing. I used to come back home, take a nap, and then stay up all night working, and then kind of go to sleep for a few hours and go back to work, and then come back home, take a nap. I'm naps are gone, and then time I take a nap now, it's like it, it just kills my clock. So I factor on that. I usually now am trying to go to bed anywhere between 11 and 12 um, because I know I'm going to have to get up anywhere between, like usually around uh, 7 is when I want to try getting up and getting ready because he, luckily for me he sleeps till anywhere between 7.30 and 8 these days. Um, so the big thing is the job I think is family friendly from the standpoint that you're going to basically probably be you know responsible for taking a kid to and from daycare and managing stuff that goes throughout the day now my wife does have days off in the middle of the week uh, which i don't have unless it's a you know state federal holiday uh, today is a snow day because in new england we got foot of snow last night and that wiped us out today so like surprise uh, you're off today so that means do work from home answer emails but your daycare is also closed so that means you're going to be also working from home with a kid Mm, that's different uh, versus in the past I could sleep in all I want <laughs> so basically like you have to start managing your whole work cycle around that kid and then this makes things tough because I am sincerely thankful for my wife because we have great communication in terms of other things to come up because you're going to have things that you can't avoid as an academic uh, you have to go to graduation graduation is always on a weekend for me so I'm going to spend a whole day at graduation. I might have to ask my wife to make sure she's off that day. Uh, conferences. I will go to conferences, and I may be gone for two or three days. And, and you know, in the past, I would go, and me and my, my wife would come with me sometimes. We'd turn a vacation into it. Uh, so I would stay around maybe for an extra day just to relax. I don't do it anymore. Like, if I go to a conference, I am trying to get in and out. I have now, if there's anything on the West Coast, live off of red eyes. Like, my whole goal was to go in, go to the conference, and get home as soon as possible because I hate being away from my family. That has been something very different for me as well. Um, maybe when they're older, I, that will change because I can take care of themselves, but as it stands right now, I want to get home. Um, especially because there could be things going on. I could be sick. I could be teething. I hate putting more pressure on my wife because of that. But um, it definitely takes a lot more time scheduling for those. And I do a lot of extra... Uh, talks throughout the year because I'm into digital health and a lot of people invite me and I have to like cognizantly figure out which ones do I want to do and that is what probably what has changed a lot in terms of um, trying to choose what is worth my time now um, whereas in the past I may say yeah I'll help you out with this project or I'll do this and telling students yeah I can volunteer for that I now look at my school and say oh my wife is working that weekend I can't volunteer uh, unless I bring my kid. And I've done that. I brought my kid to events, but I try not to. Um, but it's kind of like at the point where even things where I used to say, yeah, I would definitely want to do that, but I don't have the time. And time is the one commodity that you cannot bank, unfortunately, in this life. So 
the time factor is where things change drastically. I would say I used to be very much lost of fear about a lot of things and very just easy going about that. And when I got back to work, I after getting off paternity leave, it was very much like, I don't want to deal with any of this crap. Like, if it has to get done, let's get done. And I've been trying to get much more cognizant of terms of how to do better time management because, again, as I mentioned, like, I got to make sure I get squeeze out those things. Um, so family life balance in academia, I would say, is pretty positive. Um, you're not working in the evenings unless you are doing work at home. Um, you're not doing work on a weekend unless you take work home with you. And if you're in the week and you say, I'm going to set my time at this and get all these projects done, that's great. There's been times, though, where that I would look and say, okay, I have to get this lecture done and things come up and I'm like, oh, crap, my time's coming down or the a paper comes back. Like I have one on my docket that I have to review uh, and I have another paper that I have to rewrite. And I'm just like thinking back. We just had Thanksgiving holiday. I said maybe I'll have a day to work on that but it hasn't worked out. So I still have a paper I need to rewrite. What am I going to do that? Am I going to do an evening? Am I going to do it during the day? I have to choose like what's a good time for it. And those of you guys in academia writing, you know that writing can come and go. I find blogging much easier to do because I don't have to worry about peer reviewers half the time. So these are the kind of things that I think always stand out is it's usually a good job, I think, for family life in terms of work-life balance. The big thing on you is just recognizing that you, ha your work, things way in advance and things fluctuate. There's meetings all the time, there's scheduling. You're always thinking about lectures and such and short-term projects, and you have to find a good balance between all that. Otherwise, you'll just get destroyed. You'll get kicked with things. And with kids, especially if you're going to be the primary person to go to, if things immediately go wrong, then um, that's on you. Um, and that's can interrupt your whole day. Like there's been times like I've there's been once so far where I had to take him to ER because uh, I woke up one morning and he got stuck in a crib. It was a freak accident and there went my day because um, I immediately had a message faculty and say, hey, look, I'm not coming in, which can be, you know, you can come and go and depending on things. But the big thing is like, what if you were teaching that day? Like I, I haven't had to deal with it, but I'm dreading the day where my wife is working and I have a lecture to give and he's sick in the morning you know, vomiting or diarrhea or something, he has a fever, and I'm going to be like, what do I do? Um, who's going to take him? Because I have no family around me. That's the other thing. I have no one close by and drop him off. Daycare's not going to take him if he's sick because of the other kids. So it's a decision you have to make if that comes down to it. So those are kind of things that have gone through for me, and I would say those are big things that I found. Um, I, I think it's definitely a... A thing where you're gonna as much time as you used to have before having kids after you have kids you lose a lot more time and you have to really emphasize what you do and do not want to get done or have the time to dedicate to and you need to be choosy in terms of what is best for you your work and everything else as well um, and I can work around that schedule because I definitely now turn down things where um, for instance like I used to volunteer to give uh, presentations nationally that I didn't get paid for. They would say, hey, we'll fly you out, give you a hotel. I'd be like, yeah, it's cool. You know, it's, it's experience to go travel and go see some things. Um, nowadays, I'm just like, no. If there is no money coming in for that and it has no nothing I can bring back to my family, um, if I don't have an incentive, then I don't want to do it because it takes time away from the, uh, my family. So that I really, and I'm not that desperate in my AAR, my annual activities report, I have to put down this stuff. So, for me, it's kind of like, okay, no. But, yeah, it's just one example of how to change. Anyway, this is the Digital Apothecary and Associate Professor of Pharmacy Practice. Uh, if you have comments or questions, feel free to post them. I'll talk about them in the future. Take care. Have a good day.